everyone. Can you hear me okay with this? Yep. Cool. All right. Awesome. So, yeah, as Sabine said, my name is Megan. I work at 99 Designs, which is a company that Kirsten mentioned just before. Uh, so tonight I would like to take you through my top five mistakes as a UX practitioner. I would actually just say that these are kind of five of the big mistakes that I've made and learned from that I thought that I could share with you all, but I make a shitload of mistakes all the time as well. So I don't know if this is necessarily the limit. Okay, so let's jump straight in. So number five, being afraid to make mistakes. Um, so this is really thinking about back when I first started um, my career as a UX practitioner or UXer, it's easier to say. So um, I, I was really afraid to kind of say something that was wrong, to voice my opinion. I thought that everybody around me kind of knew a lot more than me. Uh, I had this kind of imposter syndrome type of feeling and I, I, I really just tried to go along with the flow. Now, one example of where this kind of came to fruition was I was working in an agency and I was uh, creating a mobile app prototype for a client. And what had happened was we, like I created these wireframes and we wanted to effectively test out the workflow and the interface of the mobile app. And the account manager that I was working with had sold usability testing to the client. Awesome, like great way to test it. But what actually eventuated was that this usability testing uh, found me in a room, like a boardroom, full of eight participants all at once, walking through the interface on a big screen, kind of like this, and looking for their feedback on like, what would you, you know, what would you expect when you clicked this button? And, you know, what does this mean to you? And I mean, for anyone that's kind of been in those types of situations or done one-on-one -on -one usability testing, I mean, it, it's kind of not effective if you're doing it in a room full of eight people and the person isn't interacting with the interface themselves. Uh, so this was a really good learning for me that I should have trusted my gut instinct and I should have spoken up and I should have said, hey, like, I don't think that eight people in a boardroom for an hour is really an effective use of our time or our client's money to test the interface. Why don't we try and split it out and do some one-on-one -on -one testing? So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to speak up, uh, go with your gut instinct. And who cares if you get it wrong? Like what's the worst that could happen? Going it alone. So when I was working at NYOB, so I've got a bit of a shared past with Kirsten, uh, I was doing a contextual inquiry um, type of research, which for those who don't know it, you're kind of going along to uh, somebody's workplace and you're observing what they're doing and then that would go for a couple of hours and then you're kind of making some observations and having a discussion with them potentially about it afterwards to learn why they were doing particular things in certain ways. So I'm doing these contextual inquiries to get to know NYOB customers a little bit better and see how they're using their accounting software. And what happens is I'm doing these contextual inquiries all on my own and I'm going out and visiting people at their workplaces and like all that was going fine except for this one time this guy's workplace that I went to was kind of out in the outer suburbs and it was his home office <laughs> and he had the incense burning he had some sexy music playing and he wanted to do like this contextual inquiry like research on the couch and just have a bit of a chat and get to know each other a little bit better and that was kind of uncomfortable and I was there all on my own um, and I was trying to like get on with the job and you know make some value out of the session but it was just like a really uncomfortable and I think looking back a really stupid situation for me to have put myself in. So what I'd say that I learned from there is when you're going out and doing this type of thing absolutely take somebody with you not only for your own safety but it is also a great shared uh, bonding and learning experience as well and, and of course <laughs> And of course, it's also really handy to have someone else back up to you know, take notes and to just be chatting about it and having a bit of a debrief as well. So don't jump into things on your own. Not considering the environment. So um, this is a picture of the 99 Science office. Just the other week, I was running some usability testing from our offices. And I, you know, I had like a bunch of stuff on my plate. I'd organized the testing. So I'd written my recruitment brief. I talked to the recruiters, organized my testing script, um, prepared the test materials, got my laptop all set up with the recording equipment, you know, all of that kind of stuff that you've just got to do. Um, 
I totally just overlooked the fact that we were doing testing in the 99 Designs office and I was looking for feedback on their first time use of our website and wanted to kind of find out what they thought 99 Designs was as a company. Now, the part that I hadn't considered was they're walking into this awesome workplace, as you can see here, and that's kind of influencing what they're thinking the company does as a whole. So they were thinking that we're a design agency, which is sort of right, but kind of not as well. And they're looking around, they're feeling like, oh, I'm just like, you know, here doing the testing in a, a with a bunch of designers around me. And that's kind of, they were missing the point of, I guess, um, what I was looking to find out. And that was because I was so biased from the environment that they were in. Another situation was that um, I was working for a company and we were running some usability testing out of our offices in Sydney. And again, did all the prep work, got all the admin and everything sorted out. But again, forgot that uh, first time experience of what, what's it gonna be like for the first, person when they arrive at our office to do this type of testing or interview. Now our offices in Sydney were pretty flash. They were in like a really nice office building, big skyscraper on like the 15th floor. And what was happening was people were arriving at the office, it wasn't, um, it had pretty poor signage as well. So they were already feeling a little bit unsure if they were in the right place or not. Then they need to get up to the 15th floor to get to our offices. And being a pretty smick high tech building, the lifts were those ones where um, you go to like a little thing on the wall and you type in which floor you wanna to go to. And then it like flashes up for a millisecond that you've gotta to go to like lift A, B, C, D, E, F. Now for somebody coming into the offices for this research and being faced with this type of lift experience and trying to get up to level 15 for this company that they've never actually visited before. Like that was a pretty shitty experience for them to even you know, get in to start that re research session with us because they're already starting on the back foot. They're not, um, they're not feeling like they know where they're going. They're already feeling a little bit uncomfortable because it's, it's difficult to even use the lift in this building. So looking back on that, like some things that we could have done was actually consider, okay, what's it going to be like for a stranger to come into our office space? Maybe we could meet them in the foyer. Maybe we could give them our contact number so they could easily give us a call if they're feeling lost and make them feel a little bit more comfortable so that when they um, actually reach level 15 to do the testing session, that things are running a little bit smoother for them. Being busy. So I'm sure that everybody here is guilty of kind of having this feeling of I'm, I'm busy, like I'm too busy. Someone asks you how you're going, how your week was, and you just kind of go, oh, like super busy, got so much on my plate. Now, I try not to say this too often because what I've found is that this starts to cut people off. It cuts off their uh, the potential that they might be asking you for feedback or looking to collaborate or bounce ideas um, around with you. Because if you're always saying that you're busy, they're just going to assume that you don't have any time for that. I also find that this uh, idea of being busy, like if I'm saying that I'm busy, it's kind of got a compounding effect and I think like, oh my God, I've got so much on my plate. And it means that I've got a lot less time to do my own personal learning and personal growth. So I recommend that everyone make time to put some time in your calendar or get a routine where you can actually read a book, uh, check out a blog post, have a coffee with someone else in the industry and learn a little bit more from them because you're going to benefit greatly from that. It's also really important to just not always appear as the busy person in the office and actually maybe block out time in your calendar so you can be available for other people to bounce ideas off them because the end result's gonna be much better. Lastly, not backing myself is a big mistake and I make this mistake all the time. So being a female in the tech industry, being an introvert as well, I typically shy away from a whole bunch of stuff, or at least I used to. I try not to now, and I try to put myself out there, such as me being here today. But I found that I can be really dismissive of my own experiences and make a lot of assumptions that everyone around me knows a lot more, that I don't deserve to be where I am. All of these things are really negative things to be thinking about yourself. And if you're feeling them, that can be coming out in your body language and also can impact the way that other people are perceiving you as well. So everyone, like you just gotta get out of your own head, you gotta start backing yourself, have more confidence in your experience and what you can bring to the table. Uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes as well, because I know that certainly I, I still make a lot of mistakes and I know that that's how I'm learning and that's how I'm growing.
as well. So thanks.